I'm uh, uh, Cindy Steinke Anderson. I've lived on the hilltop since 1973. Through uh, my, my associations with uh, community groups, I um, became very interested in hilltop history and I worked on um, uh, with the Hilltop Historical Society. I was president for a few years and uh, the 1913 flood was very important to the Hilltop because uh, people moved up here to get away from the lowlands and um, the possibility of having to live through another flood. Uh, the 1913 flood was very devastating to Columbus. It, it all started from a, a terrible weather system out west. Omaha, Nebraska um, had tornadoes that just devastated the entire state. And eventually the effects from this weather system went around the world. So I, I interviewed uh, survivors of the flood. One uh, lady that I remember, she told about um, her mother was break, baking bread and it was uh, sunny outside, um, but it had been raining, and um, the rain had stopped, that she recalled, and um, the neighbors were yelling that the levee had broke, broken. Her mother didn't want to leave the bread in the oven, and the neighbors, you know, finally convinced her that she had to escape now. And so she and her mother um, ran up the street and got up on the uh, railroad trestle that uh, was behind the old firehouse. They started running and she was with her, her best friend and her best friend's grandma was right behind them. And she said um, they were running up, up the hill toward the hilltop on this railroad track. And she heard a loud crashing noise and she looked behind her and um, this tremendous wall of water had plowed through and she watched her best friend and her grandmother washed away right there. And that happened right on Glenwood Avenue. It washed everything away and the stunning thing, and the pictures show uh, houses washed away on Glenwood. There's houses, all of Franklinton, they were uh, houses tipped over, washed away, um, but right south uh, of this area on Glenwood Avenue is Mount Calvary Cemetery, and the biggest visual for me is that um, this tremendous wall of water went right through that cemetery and washed away mausoleums, uh, gravestones. Uh, I did you know? Just imagine everything under about 30 feet of water. People who did escape um, that were able to come climb up to the hilltop um, stayed on the the grounds of the psychiatric hospital and um, they, they had buses uh, that people stayed in and um, the psychiatric hospital was pretty self-sufficient. They had their own farm and so forth and um, I remember Rose telling me that they ate spaghetti all the time. One of my dear friends, Henry Davies, he uh, survived the flood and um, he was born in this house down in the bottoms and um, when the flood water finally went down, they went home, and um, uh, there was a hog that was stuck in the in the window of the basement, and it was, you know, of course, probably um, decayed and so forth. You can just imagine uh, a man and his children. He there was a tree a picture. There's a picture of a tree, and this man strapped his children and himself into this tree, and they, uh, most of them froze that night because this was in March and um, it was bitterly cold. It was, you know, warm enough to rain, but bitterly cold at night. And um, it's just, uh, the, there are tons of stories. And